So this is a synthesis problem. They want us to make cyclodecane out of this starting material. So you, has your instructor covered um, theoacetals? Yeah. Okay. So that's something you and I haven't really talked about at all. Yeah. So. I mean, it's similar to starting with uh, diol. Right. So we should actually. Okay, well we need to review then um, how to use these sulfur compounds. So um, these are, like you said, they're pretty similar to attack with alcohols. Pretty similar to attack with alcohols. After all, sulfur is right underneath oxygen in the periodic table. Now remember that, um, and this is going to be, do you know what category this is going to be? Category two. Yeah, this is going to be category two, which means two nucleophilic atoms are going to attack. And very often they might be two nucleophilic atoms from the same molecule. So then they're still they're going to get a cyclic theoacetal. Now, in order for that to work with alcohols, remember we needed an acid catalyst, and we used sulfuric acid. You need an acid catalyst here too, but what's used is a Lewis acid, um, like BL3. Or CNCl. That's right. So instead of using a bronsted lowry acid, we're going to use a Lewis acid. We just need to have that memorized. Um, should we go through the mechanism for this or just draw the product? We can go through the mechanism. Okay. Well, the mechanism is pretty similar to what we saw before So uh, for alcohols. So let's go through that mechanism. All right. Actually. So uh, that's not the best so use of our time. Let's just draw the product. Great. Okay, here's our product. Very good. And the key thing is that you realize that since we're starting with a neutral nucleophile, it's going to have to deprotonate after it attacks, or have a charge. We've seen many examples of that pattern now. So after the sulfur attacks, even though we haven't gone through the mechanism, we know it would have to deprotonate. Because both sulfurs are coming from the same molecule, we're going to end up with a cyclic compound. This is called a, I guess, a theoketal, to be most specific, because it came from a ketone. Theo means sulfur. Theo means sulfur. So this is a theoketal, although, uh, what does the book call it? The book actually calls it a theoacetal. They're not being too specific about whether it's an acetal or a ketal. All right, but anyway, that gives us this. All right, and then why would you ever want to do this? Well, one very interesting thing you can do here is that you can defunctionalize a theoacetal or a theoketal. What does it mean to defunctionalize something? It means to replace the functional groups with hydrogens. We've seen very few ways to do that. And the method that they use is, it's basically a hydrogenation. We'll just need to memorize molecular hydrogen and what's called rainy nickel, is which is a type of metal catalyst. For these, are we supposed to use equilibrium arrows? No. The first step probably is an equilibrium, although they didn't show it that way in the book. I think that the first step probably is equilibrium, but they didn't, uh, they didn't say for sure in the book. Isn't it not equilibrium? Because then you have to go back to it. You have to add uh, HgCl2. Right. Well, that would just mean that in order to go all the way back, to totally shift the equilibrium, you have to go that way. So I don't know. Um, I don't really know whether to think of this as uh, equilibrium or not. In the book, they just they don't uh, mention it as equilibrium. Anyway, 
what happens when we treat this with rainy nickel? It just completely blasts away the sulfurs. You can see why this is a defunctionalization. It's just completely blasted away the sulfurs. Uh, you don't need to know the mechanism for this. It just blasts away the sulfurs. Of course, you don't even have to show these as hidden hydrogens. You could just write this now like this. So how is this useful for synthesis? Well, if you need to completely obliterate a functional group and not replace it with another functional group, one good way to do that is first make this theoacetal or theoketal and then hydrogenate it with the radi nickel. Um, of course, you have to start with an aldehyde or a ketone. So if you want to completely get rid of a functional group, start with an aldehyde or a ketone, and you treat it uh, with um, this thiol to make it into a theoacetal or a theoketal, and then we use the hydrogen and the radi nickel. So that's the reaction of the book. Does that make any sense? Yes. Okay, well, in that case, I think we should be able to do question 17, 7, or in year 17, 8. So again, the problem is oh, no, a synthesis no. problem. Starting from this starting material, we need to make the product cyclodecane. So we're going to have to. And it's good that you're actually writing out the cyclodecane. It's a You know you want to oxidize it? Because there's no uh, carbonyl group or there's no... And how do you know you want a carbonyl group? Because... Because once you get the carbonyl, you, just, you can turn it into a bioacetal. Bio, 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 yeah, and then right. bring nickel of the lake. So, so, the, or should we, so should we use PBCL? PBCL? PCC. Let's talk through that. Now, the thing that should most jump out at you here is that there are no functional groups in the product. So we know we need a way of defunctionalizing. Well, the way we just learned for defunctionalizing was making the theoacetal and then blasting it with rainy nickel. But what do you need to, what, what, what do you make theoacetals out of aldehydes and ketones? So you're right that we need to oxidize this. So you have to add an OH group for alcohols, because for PCC, don't you need an alcohol? That's a good point. PCC won't work on this compound. PCC only works on alcohols. So we can't just treat this with PCC. Actually, it turns out that the whole PCC method is going to be a red herring. That's not the easiest approach here. There's an easier way. Pardon? Actually, that's a red herring too, because that would also only work on alcohols. The whole alcohol approach turns out not to be the best approach. Now, what you guys have said is we need to turn these into, well, basically, what type of function do we want to turn these into? Ketones. Ketones. Well, there's a oh, what's analysis. Excellent. Good. Very good. So that was one of the reactions we went over at the end of last term. How to make um, aldehydes and ketones out of double bonds, O's analysis. That's right. And then we have an O. Oh, this is easy. But then we have so many O's. Uh, then you just have like a cut in between. Do you oh. remember what the reagents are for O's analysis? Uh, And then we have to have H2O2 and something like that? The one that's usually used is dimethyl sulfide. Um, so that's the safest, uh, dimethyl sulfide. However, if you add something like a thioacetal, no, not a thiosulfur. What is this just called? Like a sulfur, disulfur? It's called a, a thiol. Oh, I guess a dithiol. Because so it's like just, an alcohol. If you just add a dithiol, mm -hmm. wouldn't you have, have to add two equivalents of it? Or? That's a good point. That's right. 
Okay, so for the O's analysis, we saw the technique last time of erasing the middle of the bond, erasing the middle of the double bond and putting in a couple of oxygens. So that didn't give you any trouble. 